Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Hebern, the Chief Operating Officer of Level Financial Advisors, and I am here with my esteemed colleague, Mike Angelucci, CFP MBA extraordinaire. And today Good we're going to revisit an old topic, um, something that uh, was, was pretty popular on our YouTube channel. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about I-bonds because um, they've made some news uh, recently. And we'll put a link to some of our old videos on I-bonds as well in the comments section of this video. But Mike, uh, welcome. Let's let's start right off here. Let's start with a, what's a quick summary of what an I-bond is and maybe why somebody might want to own them. I-bonds are traditional U.S. savings bonds that uh, pay the rate of inflation. They pay a fixed rate and then they pay on top of that fixed rate whatever the last six months of inflation was. So they're constantly adjusting. The interest rate is constantly adjusting. So in theory, over time, if you put $100 into an I-bond, you'll have the purchasing power of $100 today in the future when you take that money out. So it'll maintain its value over time. It's not going to grow like the stock market, but it'll maintain its purchasing power over time. Okay. And uh, what's the current rate of an I-bond if somebody wanted to purchase today? And maybe also compare that with what it has been in the past uh, couple of years. The, one of the reasons why the I-bonds were so popular a few years ago was because they were paying 9.62%. And that was at a time when banks, even high yield savings banks, were maybe paying two, two and a half percent so they were very appealing. It was the only place you could go and really get a guaranteed interest rate at, at that level. And so and they for, became- For context, Mike, how far, how long ago was that? It was, was that uh, late. Uh, if I look at my chart here, went back to late 2021, early into 2022, people were uh, earning 9.62. So, so, so not that long ago. No. Okay. No, so the and, and um, so they were very appealing. A lot of people bought into them. There was a lot of interest in them. Um, and then the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates and getting inflation under control. Consequently, savings um, accounts, the interest rate on savings accounts started going up as the Fed started raising short term interest rates. Uh, the uh, savings banks were forced to start paying higher interest rates. And now we know that somebody can go to a high yield savings account. There's many out there. You can get between four and 5% on money that's sitting in a bank account. Right, exactly. So why then would somebody, well, what's the current rate, for example? I think, I don't know if we touched on that. We want to make sure we, no. we hit the current interest rate on these. And, and the, the current rate that was just issued for May of 2024 is 4.28%. And that is based on a 1.3% fixed rate. So as long as you own those bonds, you're going to get 1.3%. And for May through November of this year, it also added 2.98% for inflation. So now your return for the next six months will be 4.28%. The Nice thing is, you know, you'll never get less than 1.3% and you'll get that plus the rate of inflation going forward if you hold those bonds. Is there, is there Mike, a, a set time limit on how long you have to own them or can you, you know, uh, sell whenever you want? Good. That's a great question. You, you need to hold them for one year. So you can't get your money out for a year if you take money out between years one and five. So after year one, when you're able to take money out in the first, the next four years, you are penalized three months worth of interest. So if you take money out before five years, you're penalized three months worth of interest. After five years, there is no penalty. You can take the money out. There's no interest penalty. And I think the reason why it's structured that way is because th this is supposed to be maybe a little longer term holding for people. And sometimes the question comes up, you know, how much an I-bond should I own? And the way I uh, looked at that and what I've recommended to clients uh, is 
probably with your bond holdings, you don't want to have more than eight or ten percent of your money in inflation protected uh, securities like an I bond. Clients of ours, if they're in in one of our model portfolios, we hold about eight percent treasury inflated protected securities. So generally for our clients, we won't say you don't need to own much more. Obviously, a few years ago when you could get 9.62% and people had cash, it, it, that was a great deal. There, there was um, no reason not to do it if you didn't need the money within a year. Say, so it, under what circumstances would somebody consider buying I-bonds now at 428 uh, obviously, considering it's it's less than half than what it was even a couple of years ago. I think that I've looked at this and said it's still not a bad deal if you have a need in the next few years. Now, remember, you can't take it out for a year. So if you have a need in the next one to seven to 10 years and you want to make sure that you don't have any change in the value of that money that you put aside and I should add, you can only put $10,000 a year aside per social security number. You can add another 5,000 through your tax return, but you can only do electronic deposits to US Treasury Direct uh, in the amount of $10,000 a year per social security number. So getting back to the question, what would, would be a good uh, reason for somebody to do that? And it would just be, I know I'm gonna buy a car in a few years or, do an addition to the house or remodel the kitchen, whatever it will be. And you want to make sure that you don't have any deviations in value and that your, your money keeps up with the rate of inflation. That would be kind of the short-term ideal. Okay. All right. So shifting gears then, let's talk about the folks that may have purchased I-bonds previously, even the ones that, um, you know, that purchased in the 9% range. What should they consider now that um, obviously the, the math has changed? Yes, that's a, that's a great question. And that's actually a question that I'm wrestling with. And I'm going to share my screen for, for a minute and go to the iBonds web uh, page. And this is right at U.S. Treasury Direct. And you click on the iBonds page. And this comes up and this tells you right now that you can see that you're going to earn 4.28% from May through October 31st. Now, remember earlier I said it's based on a fixed 1.3% plus this 2.98%. Now, somebody like myself and many other people that bought bonds back in May of uh, 2022 or before that, and they were getting 9.62, that fixed rate was zero. So all of that 9.62 was the rate of inflation that you were earning. So now somebody like me and others, my rate is only going to be 2.98% the next six months because I have a zero fixed base. So the zero plus the 2.98 is only 2.98. And if you go to this page for people that are interested, you can scroll down and you can go to this rate chart. There's a couple different uh, things here, but the rate chart is nice. It's going to be a lot of information. I'll try to quickly uh, show a little bit of how this, how to look at this. So somebody that may have bought back in May of 2022, like myself, I was getting 9.62. Then inflation started to get under control in 2022. So the, uh, the, the, the inflation adjustment was 6.48 because you can see over here, this tells you what fixed rate you got and what periods of time that you may have bought. So somebody that bought in uh, between May of 2022 and October 31st of 2022, their fixed rate component was zero. So you got, you earn 9.62%, then 6.48%, then 3.38, 3.94. You're still saying, okay, that's not too bad, right? I'm still in the neighborhood of high yield savings. Uh, and if I take it out, there's a penalty. Now, then it, it dropped to 2.96, and now it's going to go up a little bit to, to 2.98 um, moving, moving forward. So this was through May of 24. So 
you just have to go and log into your account and see when you bought your bonds and you can pull up this grid and kind of look at what you're earning now. So if you bought bonds, you know, you can go way back here. If you bought bonds back in 01, you had a fixed rate of 3%, um, you're going to get 3% plus the 2.98. So this year you'll get uh, uh, 5.98 or the next six months you'll get 5.98. So this is a little confusing, but the important point is, is that people that purchase their bonds in prior um, periods are not going to earn 4.28. They're going to earn something right now that's less than that, especially those of us who bought bonds at 0%. And so they're going to have to factor in, obviously, the penalty mm -hmm. um, and just um, what you know how much they have invested. And that's when it really pays to sit down with your financial advisor and your plan and be like, all right, well, let's let's take a look. Are you going to need this cash or, you know, would it be better for you to uh, pull it and put it somewhere else? Those are the types of questions that a financial advisor, a good financial advisor should be able to answer for their clients, I'm assuming. <laughs> yes. And I think and in, in, in some of that discussion will be. You know, do you have other money in a treasury inflated protected um, investment? So a lot of our clients, they already own tips. They're eight percent of their fixed income is in treasury inflated protected securities. And the nuance to that is based on our analytics and research, that seems to be the optimal amount. That seems to be about what proportion of your total bond portfolio you should have in these type of securities, whether they be I bonds or treasury inflated protected securities. Uh, if it's one of our clients and they're, they're sitting on some money, some of the discussion will be, you know, are you going to use this in the near future? Um, are there other options that might be more appealing to you? Uh, are, if, if you really just want to make sure you, you're maintaining the purchasing power of these dollars for something in the future, then probably keep it there. Uh, somebody like myself who's already in our model portfolio, I might, I'm going to start doing the math on this and see if the penalty makes sense because I can move it to a online savings account earning five. Now, right. the last thing I'll mention on that is the other thing you had to think about is the I bonds are going to keep paying the rate of inflation. You don't know what you're going to get in a high yield savings account. If the Fed starts lowering interest rates, that's going to go down pretty quickly, whereas you're going to lock in for a little longer period of time if you have I bonds. So, and, right. and one last thing to complicate it, if the Fed starts lowering interest rates, that probably means inflation is under control and your I-bond interest is going to start going down in the future. So I think it's something that I'm going to be looking at. I think it's something we should continue to look at in the future to give guidance to clients on because a lot of us bought in with that 0% base interest rate and that's affecting the overall decision model here. All right. Really, really good stuff. All right. So uh, if you have questions about that, please, um, if you're a client, um, call the office and, and speak with your advisor. If you're not a client and you want to talk I-bonds, please feel free to visit our website or give the office a call. And we'll put you in touch with somebody who can uh, talk about this topic with you. So until next time, this is Mike Heburn and Mike Angelucci from Level Thanks. Financial. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.